Hey everyone, it's Tom June here, back with not a UK space news update, but one of the Canadian variety. Canada is a country famous for maple syrup, Mounties, ice hockey, the Hart Dynasty, William Shatner, and of course, spaceflight. Thanks to the Canada arm and the living legend that is ISS Commander Chris Hadfield. Now, there are two spaceports under construction vying for supremacy in this very Canadian, most likely very polite, space race. So, let's dive in and take a look. First up, we have Maritime Launch Services, based in Nova Scotia. This spaceport began construction back in late 2022 and was originally going to use the Ukrainian Cyclone 4M rocket. But of course, this fell through with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and they instead turned their attention to Skyrora, who they signed a memorandum of understanding with that same year. Nothing more has been said on that agreement since then, but in summer 2025, just a few weeks ago, Maritime Launch Services signed a further agreement with Reaction Dynamics to launch their hybrid Aurora 8 rocket starting in 2028, trying to keep everything in-house and also oh Canadian. MLS will have two launch pads at their launch site, which are designed to offer both sun-synchronous and equatorial launch options. A small test flight did occur in July 2023, thanks to a rocket built by a student STEM group from Ontario's York University, named Goose 3. MLS hoped to be fully operational with an orbital test flight from RDX by 2028. But before then, another player has entered the game, and these guys are moving faster than maybe anyone thought. Nordspace are also constructing a spaceport complex, but they're not just doing that, they're also building the rockets they'll fly. So the Canadian Orbex. But unlike Orbex, these guys have motored ahead and are, as of this week, preparing for their first suborbital test flight. The Atlantic Spaceport Complex, or ASX, because who doesn't love an acronym, is being built near St. Lawrence in Newfoundland and Labrador, pretty much a stone's throw northeast of the MLS launch complex. ASX will have two launch complex areas. Space Launch Complex 1, or SLIC 1, will house two launch pads for orbital rockets, while SLIC 2 will be for suborbital flights and tracking infrastructure. With the spaceport sitting at 46 degrees latitude, that will enable them, much like MLS, to offer both polar and equatorial orbital paths. But of course, I did mention that Nordspace are also manufacturing their own rockets. First up, they have the Tega sounding rocket. This is a 16 feet long, single stage rocket powered by kerosene and liquid oxygen, and utilising a single 3D printed, regeneratively cooled engine called Hadfield. Now, this engine is capable of putting out 35 kilonewtons of thrust, and the Tega rocket will carry a payload up to 30 kilograms. Their next planned rocket is called Tundra, which will be a two-stage system with optional third kick stage, also powered by kerosene and liquid oxygen, thanks to seven Hadfield 35 engines on the first stage. There will also be one vacuum-optimized Garneau engine on the second stage, and it's capable of carrying 500 kilograms to low Earth orbit, which puts it right in the Orbex Prime Arena. It will also be capable of launching from a mobile platform, as Nordspace are looking to fly from anywhere in the world within a 48 hour window. This rocket is under development and is due to be test flown by 2027. From 2032, Nordspace aimed to have an even larger two-stage rocket capable of carrying 2000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, named Titan. The rockets will also have military capability, as the company are also working on a multi-fuel hypersonic rocket engine named M2S Hyrock. 
They've also successfully test fired a new engine test cell called Dark Horse just about a week ago and have a third engine named Bondar also in development. And while Slick 1 is still under construction, Slick 2 is actually complete and ready for a test flight with the Tega rocket. The first launch window opens on Wednesday the 26th of August. Originally it was planned from Monday the 24th, however due to the after effects of a hurricane, unfortunately that was no longer possible. There is no word on planned altitude for this test flight, which is named getting screeched in, but we can assume that around the 48 km mark would be a success, similar to the High Impulse SR-75 launch from 2024 in Australia. And it would certainly be enough to demonstrate that both the launcher and the spaceport work as intended. I'll be honest here, both ASX and MLS are incredible looking locations for spaceports, putting them right up there with Saxavord and Doya and Mahaya Peninsula. So while we here in the UK wait for the first flight from Saxavord, we can look to our Canadian cousins for a glimpse of what's to come. Of course, it also does put the pressure on the UK and others as these are two more spaceports entering the field in the small to medium satellite launch market, but with plenty of launchers in development, we could be seeing loads more flights in the coming years from all over the world. We'll be keeping a keen eye on Nordspace's first launch attempt, and if I'm able to, I will try to bring you guys a live stream watch along too. You know what they say, there ain't no party like a Canadian rocket launch party. Heck, the lovely folks at Nordspace are even offering a barbecue to the locals. So, Skyrora, RFA, etc. Take note, because Tom likes a barbecue. Just saying. Anyway, this is all amazing stuff, and as a fan of rocketry and all things space, I can't wait to see how this plays out. If you haven't already, check out my latest fun video project where I dive into the funniest pranks and silly moments by astronauts throughout the history of spaceflight. And while you're there, click the subscribe button to support the channel. And as usual, thank you ever so much to everyone over on Patreon for your amazing support. I've been Tom June, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.